ultrasound non-contact sensors. So we're talking about airborne now. So how do non-contact sensors work? First, distance makes a big difference in airborne sensing, right? It depends upon the sensor and the accessories that are being used. There's long range horns and there's uh, uh, cones and different types of things that you can apply to the sensor mechanism so that it can either amplify or uh, focus in what you're trying to sense. So there's also a noise floor for the measuring device, how low or how sensitive is that device. It also depends on the amplitude of sound that's being generated by the sound source and the distance away from that sound source. So for every doubling of the distance from the sound source, you lose about six decibels. In another uh, section, another uh, course, another uh, lesson within this course, we'll talk about decibels and, and uh, how they're measured. Scanning modules, these are the typical module that you would have attached to the uh, device. It's for general purpose, and uh, it's used mainly for electrical defects, for gross scanning for pressure and vacuum leaks, conveyor systems for the detection of bad rollers, and belt rubs and misaligned belts, chains, and tightness testing for either airtight or watertight structures. Focusing probes, on the bottom left picture, you'll see uh, UE Systems device, and it has kind of a conical shape um, where the small end is at the tip and the larger end is fitting around the sensor. And these are great, the focusing tips are great for when you're trying to find, uh, say, a leak in a window or small air leaks in those uh, quick connect uh, pneumatic tubing systems. Um, you don't want to use these for any distance uh, of separation because the sensor will affect the calibration and the detection capability of the normal airborne sensor. And basically, this means that you use the focusing probe once you've done a gross scan and you've, you're trying to narrow down exactly where the leak is. You can put these focusing tips on and get really close to the connections and, and really um, identify where the leak is from which joint. Long range horns are um, a little bit, they're, they're used when you uh, need to get, um, be able to sense things airborne from a larger distance. So a long range horn either slides over the scanning module or screws on to the end, or it might be a, a separate handheld as you see in the upper right uh, corner of the picture there, the gentleman taking a, a sound uh, reading with, uh, a long range horn. It increases the sensitivity of the sensor. Um, therefore, you can detect things at a longer distance. It's normally not a module. It, it usually comes a, as an accessory that you can um, connect onto your device. And it typically increases sensitivity by about five times. Um, and there's a very specific shape to those horns. Um, it, it's why they're able to concentrate the sound much better. Parabolic dishes, uh, you see um, the one on the bottom left is a, a clear background, um, but there's other, other types of them as well. Um, the parabolic dish is generally not used if you're closer to the sound source than 16 feet. So you should be at least 16 feet or five meters away from the sound source to use a parabolic dish. Um, most of them have a, have a uh, laser pointer on them so that you can detect specifically where you're aiming. And the dish can uh, either be detached or used as a, with a handle or um, some of them actually can fold up uh, for uh, transportation. So how do these sensors work? Um, one of the things is that internal and flexible sensors have a polar response. And that's a fancy way of saying that when you're off the center line by more than about 30 degrees, you get about an eight decibel reduction in the amount of sound pressure that it's able to detect. And it listens in a conical type shape or cone shape. 